Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video on this channel. In today's live vlog, I want to introduce you to the probably most valuable world upgrade I've ever done. So let's don't waste any time and dive right into it. As you already can see, this whole world site looks very different and this is <laughs> obviously because I added some height to this world site because in the first place I just had one flat surface which had basically two ground options. One is a solid ground and the second one was a liquid ground. And I now introduced some more layers. I guess it's three. One, two, and three. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> and with this option, I can introduce some more objects, which are basically only spawnable within a good height or in combination with some other options. I think this makes the whole world surface more beautiful. Of course, I'm not 100% satisfied with this result currently because I think it's a bit too green. Maybe the different world layers will have some different colors. But for now, I think this is a really, really, really cool change. Not only because we have some more spawnable options, but because it gives the whole world side much more depth. The second change within this whole world change is the liquid. You see the water has changed a lot because now it is way more pixelated and it is a bit more shallow and also it's a bit brighter. It's not that dark blue. I don't know how I like that. Maybe I'll change the color back to its original color blue but I think the color does match to the whole surface. What I'm still missing is the foam on the border of the water object. But to be honest, it is super hard to achieve that within the shader graph because currently I use the orthographic camera and all the techniques I know are for perspective camera. So the foam does not work. So I'm still working on that, but I still wanted to show you this result. I kind of like that change in general with the new water and also the new height of the surface. And of course, there will be much more environment objects on the surface, for example, some flowers. So there's a bit more color on this side, as well as other trees, bigger trees, for example, so that the whole world side gets much more interesting. And now some quick insights on how I did this pixelated water, because I didn't know it at first either but it's super interesting. First, we get the UV node within shader graph of the object and multiply this by the pixel size. You don't need this uh, float node at all. You could just easily use this one directly. I don't know what I did there to be honest. <laughs> anyway, we are using this multiplied node, which basically multiplies the pixel size with the UV and we round that. So you see, we get some divided UV. The original looks like this. And then we're dividing the currently rounded UV with the pixel size. And then you get this nice pixelated texture, I would say. But we want to animate this. So we're using the time node and the speed. We want to have the pixels variate and multiplying this and then putting this into the tiling and offset offset attribute. So we have some moving scale, some, some scale which changes and the UV. And with this information, we can fill the gradient noise and can animate this. Because I do not want to have some darker spots, I have a maximum node here. So we're just using the top values between one and 0 0.4. And then we're just adding this to our color and multiplying this again. So the whole white thingies are getting more blue or more in the color of our base color. And then filling this into the base color attribute. Yeah, and that's kind of it on how I did this pixelation stuff. The wave stuff isn't anything new. You can find this on every tutorial on YouTube. Some other cool stuff I added was the world selection mode um, because uh, of course currently there still is this UI here. This will get removed because I kind of like the new feature as when you hover over a world site, it pops out. And I think this is a really, really, really squishy way to show what current world site is selected. I really like that. And the plan is I didn't show you today because I want to bring the video out. The plan is to 
have a headline which basically is the selected world site here at the top and on the left or right you can see all available resources which are on the selected world site and then you can collect them there. Another change also is that when you select the world site, it has now a specific background color. So last times when you selected all these different world sites, it just had the same color as here the grassland but now each world site has its own background color so when we now switch to the hell side you still have its own background and i really really love that because it adds so much more feeling to the whole world side with its own environment color also on this hell side i added some steam particles and i really really like that it really kind of feels hot in here and you can basically feel the heat and I really, really love that. Of course, most of the environment objects still missing, but I think we're going step by step, a little baby steps in the right direction. We can also have a look at this mystic purplish world site and I think it's kind of cool to also have its own background color here and with this glow effect for these objects, I think it kind of fits. And of course, as well as on the other world sites, there are a bunch of objects still missing, but I think we're going in the right direction. Yep, that's it for today's devlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, then please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button and comment down below what I can do better next time. And also, if you don't want to miss any updates on this project, then please hit the subscribe button. We see us in the next video. Bye bye.